<laughs> so when, when we write about Waymo, Waymo is a startup that operates uh, ride hailing that uses robo taxis that don't have anyone in the driver's seat. And like many of Google's what we call moonshot ventures, it, it basically is a small startup that is basically been acquired over time through investment by Google or, or Google's parent Alphabet. It, it's sort of a unit of, but as you guys point out, after put like billions and billions of dollars into this thing, it's now taking outside investment as well more, more and more often because as you guys know, robo taxis ain't cheap. It's like a really expensive thing to get off the ground. So, all right, this big though raise, what do we know about why they're doing it, how yeah. they use the money and what it means about kind of where they go from here? So $5.6 billion, this was a Series C round, and it's the biggest round that Waymo's ever done. Um, they've done a couple prior where they raised about $2 billion in one, in one go, or $2.5 billion. So, so this is a lot, right? One thing that's really important to know, and this was important at the time, during Alphabet's second quarter earnings, they confirmed that they would be giving Waymo an additional $5 billion over a multi-year period. And the reason I point that out to our audience is that this round is $5.6 billion, but that $5.6 billion is inclusive of some, a little bit of money from from Google, but also those like top, top tier investors, some Wall Street investors as well. And so it's access to capital is really significant, but yes, it's also capital intensive where this is the reality of the numbers that you need to raise to get yourself to scale. Ed, you, you take, you, well, you used to take these things all the time. Yes. You go to San Francisco. Quite a lot. You still do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You also use your own Tesla self-driving capabilities True. in your car. Yes. How do you think these companies stack up against one another and when it comes to functionality, when it comes to ability, what they're able to do? So there is going to never be enough time to explain all of the very important differences between what each of these companies are doing. At the technology level, Waymo has a proprietary set of sensors and software that are completely different to Tesla's. The Waymo relies on sensors like radar and LiDAR on top of cameras, and its coding is completely different. The Tesla system, which currently is in the form of a consumer car where I pay for a subscription monthly for some advanced driver assistance software, is a camera only system the sensors are cameras the data from the world around you is only in the form of vision so the technologies are different now we talk about business model waymo's business model is still complicated there is an app it's called waymo one it's similar to uber you open the app if there is a waymo vehicle which right now are retrofitted jaguar i-paces near you you can hail one just like you'd hail an uber it arrives without a driver but only in the markets of san francisco los angeles and the greater phoenix metro metropolitan area. In the future, they partnered with Uber. It gets more complicated so that you can summon a Waymo through the Uber app in markets like Austin and Atlanta starting next year. What Tesla's doing is in the future, they, they propose to operate their own ride hailing app, but we don't know much about it. This is a field where everyone's doing it a slightly different way, and we disagree about the best method to get there. So I'm thinking about the investing public who are listening to this and thinking about, okay, when we get a Waymo IPO or something like that, but there's others out there and you and, you know, Tim just kind of, you know, you guys were di digging into some kind of the rivals that are out there. You've got We Ride, they made its NASDAQ debut um, today. Uh, Pony AI. Chinese company. Yeah, another Chinese has filed company. for yeah. another US IPO. So there's stuff out there. I mean, are you, you follow this so closely. This is all happening, right? And this shows, you know, kind of the horses left the barn. This is stuff is yes. happening. Yes, and, and like as a technology journalist, it's, I think this is so important because in life, you have your home, you either rent or you buy a home. And then you have your car, like the method of transport, you use your car or you use public transport. We share roads with all kinds of traffic. So it's so critically important. The Chinese companies are very important too. A lot of investment in that market, but their regulatory framework is completely different. Basically, if the Chinese government says, this is okay, it happens. And so often they move at a faster pace. The issue we've got here in the United States is everyone is doing this in a different way, in different 
technology formats, and then we have at each state a different state level regulation. Mm -hmm. And so there's an interesting debate there about whether we should have a nationwide and federal regulation, but there's also an academic yeah. debate, particularly about Tesla, if their tech is safe because they only use cameras, mm. they don't use other tech. And if uh, Elon Musk uh, is victorious in his quest to elect Donald Trump, uh, what happens yes. to federal regulations in that case? Mm. Uh, I do have to say my view on this what? is like Please, this type yeah. of stuff can't come soon enough because these are not emotional. Wait, you're going to get into? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Really? Nowadays. Yeah, my view has shifted. Okay. People are not good drivers, huh. Carol. Yeah, no. They're emotional. Agreed. They make rash decisions. Right. Tens of thousands of people are killed by cars in Get the U.S. every year. Easily. If there's a Correct. better way, I'm all for it. I don't know how you feel, Ed. We got 20 seconds. Uh, yeah, so basically you've been in California, Southern California in particular, mm -hmm. you've seen human drivers. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it's New not York. for us, the consumer, to decide. Regulators need to establish what the threshold is to hand it over to the robot. And that's what we're working towards in our coverage. It's so interesting. <laughs>